Hi everyone. Today I will be reviewing Boy by Matson Tomlin. This script was featured on the 2015 blacklist and was also sold and has Numi Rapace attached to star. Uh, the logline reads, a teenage boy is born with special abilities and spends his childhood switching names and cities so as to keep his identity hidden. When he loses control and accidentally kills his father, he and his mother have to go on the run. So before I read this script, um, I didn't actually read the logline because I just wanted to be surprised. Um, I'm starting to read scripts that win and enjoy it a lot more where I don't really know where the story is going to go or what direction it's going to take. Um, I just want to start by talking a bit about the writer. Uh, Matt's, I'm starting to have a lot of respect and appreciation for Matt's and Tomlin's writing because he has a very interesting style in that the scripts read very fast, they're quite visual, um, pretty good dialogue, and he's quite young. I think he's only 28 right now and he has quite a few projects set up. So I think if there's any new writers out there, you guys should try to find some of his work. Um, I reviewed Little Fish on the site already, um, now I'm reviewing Boy, and then I'm also in the middle of reading Power. And, um, you know, these scripts are being set up and they're being bought, so I think um, it's quite useful to check these out and see what's special about them. Because there, there's quite a bit here to like and appreciate and quite a bit to learn from. But basically, Boy follows um, this dystopian, no, no, not dystopian, but like a world where people are being born with a special Z chromosome, and that confers on them special abilities like telekinesis or being able to lift things, levitate things, mind reading, these types of special powers, and the world is starting to get afraid of these powers because it's giving an unfair advantage to some people. So it's basically kids that are coming up with this, and um, this follows our main character, which is Mike. He's a teenager. I think he's, sorry, I can't remember his age, I think 16 or 17 years old, and he... Um, accidentally kills his father and now i had not read the log line i didn't know i'm surprised that it's actually included in the log line but i found it interesting because that was a huge shocker to me i couldn't believe that the writer had actually taken that choice so i appreciate that aspect because that was not something that i was expecting um to see but it was quite interesting um and so he has to go on the run with his mom because the secret organization is after him to get him and research on him and that's essentially the story it's just his run them being on the run so the first half of the script I thought was excellently done. There was really good pacing, very good structure. It moved very fast. I really didn't know where the story was going to go. But then interestingly, in the second half, I thought it kind of stagnated a bit. That's not to say I wasn't interested. I still wanted to know what was going to happen, but I just found it slowed down. And I think that's a problem because that's a problem with these types of scripts where you start really fast and really good, but then the second half kind of changes its pace and it's a bit more measured and it's a bit slower and there was a lot of action and a lot of um, stuff that happened but it was just kind of like a lot of these scenes where people are just sitting down and talking to one another like we have this like one two page scene where um, they explain what the underground railroad was and it's just like okay, I get it like it's not so it's just scenes like that where the story wasn't really moving forward and you could kind of predict what was going to happen. So for example, they go to this secret um, organization or the secret rebel group that apparently specializes in hiding these kids with Z chromosome and sending them up to Canada. And you kind of already knew, like it was predictable that some people in the group were shady and that they were going to try to do something, maybe turn them in for a reward, maybe betray them, maybe try to use their power, uh, use Mike's powers for their own purposes so you kind of could see it and lo and behold that's exactly what happened they betray the uh, Marla and Mike and they um, try to use their powers and exploit them and Marla and Mike now have to escape from them so it was kind of um, that part was a bit predictable and then there was even other aspects where um, spoiler alert Marla dies in the end and you kind of you could see that coming a mile away you kind of knew it was going to end with Marla sacrificing her life for Mike and she even says it multiple times that she's, she's willing to die for Mike and um, I, th I found that part interesting. So now I guess I'm going into the criticism of it. And I think the criticism mainly comes down to the characters and their relationships. So Marla, the relationship between Marla and Mike was interesting, but it was never really explored. Like, we don't understand why Marla has so much love and affection for Mike. Um, I believe, well, Mike is, yeah, their adopted son. Um, and so I, I just didn't understand why Marla has such a huge attachment to Mike, especially when Mike killed her husband, like accidentally, but still, it's, it's, it seemed like it'd be a very shocking thing, but she kind of just shrugs it off as if it wasn't a big deal, as if it was almost expected. And I found it, I found it a bit hard buying into that and believing that she would just be fine with that happening. Um, I also found it hard to empathize with Mike because he 
is just doing the typical like teenager syndrome where life's unfair, the world's unfair. And on a certain um, level, you empathize with him because he's born with these powers. And the first 15 pages of the script make it clear that he can't um, lead a normal life. Uh, but it's like he... At the same time, it's hard because he was almost like the popular kid. Like he, he, he's he has a spot on the football team, but he's not taking it because it might show his powers. Or he has like a nice girlfriend, but he can't really be with the girlfriend because his parents aren't letting him because they're afraid again of the power. So it's like he almost has this perfect life, and it's just his supposedly his inability to control his powers that he's not able to um, be the popular cool kid and so i found that interesting because it's like it seemed it was hard to empathize and relate to that because i think part of it's because his special abilities are not fully explained we don't really understand what he can do so for example it's implied that he can lift a lot of objects and kind of show them around when he's angry so maybe basically like magneto and um but it doesn't really explain how he can control these powers or how he can hone these powers or how he can um basically like control it and so it was hard to again like i said relate to him as a character and given that he's our protagonist along with marla it, it seemed like a pretty big deal and i think that goes into the larger issue of the script because one thing that people are often citing as they need in a script is a lot of originality and i and while i mean the world is interesting the story is interesting and there's new characters it, it was hard to see the difference between this concept and that of like x-men or even this book that i read called the darkest minds which they actually made a film on last year which is essentially the same story about like kids having these special types of powers like mind reading and them being put in these concentration camps and then the sto kids having to escape it's like almost identical stories and so i found it interesting that um so i didn't find like that that part really original in this script and i'm not trying to be like nitpicky on it or trying to find flaws in it but i'm just saying my honest opinion which i feel it's like it's very similar to these other types of properties that we already have and i guess i was looking for what differentiates or distinguishes boy from these other types of properties and i couldn't really find it but i mean if you guys have read this script and um and found like something that was unique about it just let me know because it's possible i've missed it um and that's not to also say that this is a bad script this is a very competently very very well written script and like i said if you're looking to improve your structure or your pacing or even your dialogue i think the works of Mats and Tomlin are really good and that you should read them. But I just found on this angle, from just a story perspective, it was it just seemed like I'd seen this in other forms already. And I didn't know what was necessarily unique or different about this. Like, for instance, in the end, like I said, Marla dies and it was kind of predictable. You knew she was going to die. But I thought it would be interesting, a more interesting choice to see Mike die, perhaps, and see how Marla's going to deal with that. And perhaps she adopts Esme as her daughter and sees it as her new mission. You know what I mean? Like, it's just something I'm throwing out there. But I just feel like just something different, like something unexpected that we just don't see happen coming is like maybe Mike dying. And that would be like a bit more of a unique um, element to it or a unique spin to it. I did really like the villain, though, Kleiss. I found him very interesting. He was very engaging every time he was in the script. And he... Um, it was very intelligent, like he was able to psychologically outwit and outsmart a lot of the people that he was trying to interrogate. And so I liked that part and thought that was him as a villain was very interesting and very, very memorable. So I think if you guys are also looking to see how to introduce good villains, he's this is definitely a script you should check out because just for the villain alone, that was it was it was very well done. Um, and I was a bit surprised at the end why Kleiss was spared. Like I know his skin was getting peeled off by uh, Mike, but it, given that he killed his it killed Marla. I thought Mike would make sure he finishes off Kleiss, but I guess he doesn't because of the the rush or whatever. But I thought that part was a bit um, interesting. But overall, like I said, I guess I would rate this script as a good, not great. Um, it's like I said, very good structure, very good pacing, a very very well written script. But in terms of substance, in terms of originality, in terms of content, I think it could have done a bit more to try and differentiate itself from the already known properties that we have, like even like Midnight Special or like X-Men or like Darkest Minds, but still nonetheless a good script and something that you guys should check out.